tonight is August the 30th, 2022, and I have uh, a quickie video I'm going to make that some of you uh, radio astronomers might like. I am new at this. I may say some really dumb things. I need to learn a lot. So if you know something uh, that I'm doing wrong or can do better, please share your, your, your knowledge with all of us. Okay, this is a parabolic dish I've had for quite a long time. It's almost four feet in diameter. I think you can see it pretty good, yeah. And this is a feed horn I built for it for 1.42 gigahertz that's 1420 megahertz that's the um, that's the resonant frequency or thereabouts around there you don't want to go to that exact frequency but you want to be able to move around there and you can uh, find the clouds of I believe it's called free hydrogen and at its resonant frequency there's quite a bit to be learned about it and I'm just barely learning but anyway I want to show you antennas I do antennas and then uh, I'll learn more about uh, all this other stuff in a minute. Okay, the first antenna I made for this guy right here, and it worked. I gotta, I gotta get over here, sorry. And it worked actually quite well. But I wanna pull this one off. Oh my goodness, I hope I don't break things. I'm gonna set this down, I'll show you. Look at the inside of this. I made it out of, made it out of all copper. Can you see that, isn't that beautiful? Wow, man, those little radio waves are going to be so happy in there. And they all bounce around to that little pole right there, that little monopole that you can see right there. Uh, this right here, I needed this to, to fit the, uh, to fit this, because this is, this is mounted very securely. And I, I, I may need to link to this. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. But this has been a really successful antenna for me. Uh, multiple times. Oh yeah, I actually need to go get something else to show you. Be right back. Okay, this all began several years ago with a passion I had for 2.4 gigahertz of Wi-Fi. And the reason that this is what it is is because this is the feed horn I made back in those days. I've actually documented a lot of this I think that little mono pull down there, that quarter wave, is about 1.2 inches to an end connector. And I think this fits, see, right up inside there like that. That's how come, I, that's where this thing came into being, its size. And this works very well. I get 20 something dB gain out of it. I get a few uh, dB out of this, uh, out of this feed horn. Also, you might notice that I have. Some little nuts mounted right there, drilled holes, and you you can put screws in it, tuning screws, and uh, you can uh, adjust the SWR on this thing down one to one. I uh, indulged and bought and bought uh, you know spectrum analyzers, signal generators, watt elements, watt meter elements made by birds, so I can measure all this stuff. Okay, and then I made another one. I'll show you how it goes together. I don't want to break something here, but uh, this this next one goes together like this. I gotta I gotta lay the gotta lay the camera down. Sorry, Turn this thing off and, and show you where I'm going with this. I'm actually I'm actually doing something. You've got to have a pretty rigid mount, and what I did is this again. This is that real thin wall stuff, and for the 2.4 gigahertz, I made this antenna right here. You'd think I hadn't planned anything, huh? Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just do everything by the seat of my pants. Okay. Well, I gotta take that clamp off too. But anyway, th this slides in there. I'm not gonna belabor it anymore. And then this clamps it on the back, slides all the way through, and uh, it's like that. And you slide it in and out to, to, uh, to focus it and uh, you wrote this around for a vertical or horizontal polarization. This is called a slot antenna. So you can adjust this for an SWR one to one and then you can put it in here and it works great. Okay, now what I've done this time, 
went from 2.4 gigahertz to 1.42. This one slides in there like that, the same way. I kept that uh, same type of design, as you can see. And this one will slide in and, I mean, uh, there it goes, it actually, it actually went in. And you can see it comes out the back right here. And then I just simply put on a, uh, a clamp right here. I don't want this thing to fall off and break. I need a cameraman, don't I? See, and this clamps it on, so you you set the polarity, vertical or horizontal, by rotating it, and you focus it in and out to get it. See that, that line right there is where it should focus, and it does. It does exactly what the uh, mathematics says it's supposed to do. And it works. This one works. And this one's been built in just the last three or four days. And it works so well, I said, I need a better antenna. <laughs> Don't we all need a better antenna? We always need a better antenna. Okay, got to lay this stuff down so it doesn't bust. Okay, so the best way I figured I could make a better antenna would be to make a feed horn for it, and that's what this one is. Now, this one's a 1.42 gigahertz but it's the same thing as the other one it's just that I had to add this mounting stuff and see I used nylon screws of course this and the nylon screws and all this stuff is completely transparent to the RF so none of this exists as far as the RF is concerned this thing is just floating in free space but the reason that I wanted to bring both of these out here to show you is the difference in feed horn size uh, this is for 2.4 gigahertz and this is for 1.42 gigahertz I'm just really pleased I hope it works and the monopole is uh, I don't remember 1.8 inches I believe now when you do wavelength you always divide 300 million by the frequency in Hertz and you get its wavelength and then if you want a quarter of it, you divide that by four, of course, and you get a quarter wavelength. But that's quarter wavelength is free space. Anytime you're dealing with an antenna, it's always shortened a little bit. The longest wavelength is always in free space and a vacuum. And for us, they're both the same. We don't need to try to differentiate between them because we're not trying to count electrons or something like some physicists might be. And the amount that it's shortened has to do with the diameter ratio, the diameter of the, of the little stub itself to its length. And the, the bigger the diameter of the tuning stub compared to its length, the shorter it has to be. And I hear my kitty cat. There's my kitty cat over there. Let's take a look at her. Her name is Angel. She's the beauty, huh? I lost my other two this year. As I've mentioned to some of you before that we've talked about. And um, okay, so as as the uh, actual diameter of the of the antenna gets bigger, and this is true for a dipole also, to its length, the, the shorter it gets, and actually the broader it gets. See, like, look at this one right here. See how short that is? But look how, look at the diameter of it. Look how fat it is. What's amazing about that is, is this piece right here solders directly to this, direct DC short to this, and goes through and solders to the, to the driven element in the middle. And the driven element in the middle is also soldered to the very top of it. So you say, wow, this thing is like a dead short in at least two places. Well, well, it is for DC. But for 2.4 gigahertz, it is alive. I don't remember the exact dimensions of this, but you know what? I did post a video on it, if you're really that interested. Okay, so that's where I'm going. Uh, I've got to take you in and show you some of, the, uh, some of the results I've gotten so far and what I'm using. So this is my first adventure into radio astronomy here's another little neat antenna a reference type of antenna calibrated microwave goes from 1 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz now I don't think there's any gain in this 
but the way that they get that broad um, frequency range is with a cone. This part right here is insulated uh, it, in this end connector. It only connects to the, uh, to the center pin. And the rest of it is all metal. And of course, this is plastic. When I got it, a couple pieces were broken, but I put it all back together with the right kind of material. And it works. Now, I just have this crazy fantasy of, I wonder, if it would, I wonder how well it would work. It might be an impossible physical, you know, to put this up here like that somehow. So that it's, so that this thing right here is at the focus of this dish. I think I need a bigger dish. Oh yeah, I need a bigger dish. But this is about as big as I can move around. I've just got it mounted on this little uh, antenna mounting pole. You know, it goes on the apex of a house where the, where the three legs go across it and then you can put a small TV type antenna on it. I need a better mount up here, but I just kind of tighten it up and then I can force it. It kind of stays in place. Um, some really good information. One of the one of the nicest things I've I've read lately. Oh my goodness! I really don't want to break them. I really don't, because I'm liable to get a passion to do use them again. Building your very first radio telescope. This is a great, a great little article. See, it gives you all of their dimensions, and the one that I just built is by these dimensions. I agree with their dimensions. They make sense. Uh, this thing, uh, it's 11 inches long. This is, it's 11 inches from here to here. Um, it's 6 inches in diameter. Actually 5.75, I believe. Uh, the, uh, the monopole is mounted 3.5 inches from the end. The little pole down there, and it's 1.8 inches long, or 1.8, I think they came 1.811, but... Don't drive yourself crazy trying to get everything down there a fraction of a millimeter because it doesn't make any difference. And I think I mentioned this in my last video that 40 years ago or thereabouts when I was talking to an engineer out at White Sands that did millimeter wavelength stuff and I said I was I just didn't know how to deal with it, uh, microwave stuff. He said if you can if you can deal with 120 foot measuring tape and make a dipole for uh, 80 meters can you do that I said sure he said well can you use a six inch ruler and I said well yeah I think so he said well then you can deal with microwaves here's a piece of coax you have to build your own transmission line in many cases probably just about every case and what works really good is three quarter inch water pipe and you can use quarter inch but I like to use this rigid stuff I, ideally it should be about five sixteenths and the little formula, and this is in inches, I've got to remember to say that, is 132, 138 times a log, 138 times a log of the diameter ratio. So you measure the outer diameter of this one, and you measure the inner diameter of this one. And when I measure them, I get uh, 0 0.3735 for this one, and I get uh, 0 0.804 for this one. Now, your dimensions may be slightly different. I'm using a caliper here. A caliper, not a micrometer, as uh, was explained a few years back by a good gentleman. And if you do these ratios, if you do divide, you get 2.1526, and then when you take the log of it and multiply it times 100, you get 45.9 ohms. That's just characteristic impedance. All of this is divided by the square root of the dielectric constant. But we don't care about that because it's air, and the dielectric constant of air is 1, so you can throw that away. Now, what's its SWR? We all get over, a little overly concerned with SWR, although it is important. And, and the SWR is simply the impedance of your load, assuming you got a 50 ohm somewhere, and the impedance of your transmission line, 45.9. 50 divided by 45.9 is 1.08. 1.0882, I rounded to 1.09. That is an absolutely insignificant amount of reflection. An SWR of 1.21. 1.21 is 0.1% reflected power. 
that's one watt out of every thousand for 1.21 so as you can see there's really nothing to worry about there it doesn't have to, your this number doesn't have to come out to be 50 it can be a little bit more than 50 it can be like 54 between 45 and 55 is great it'll work so don't drive yourself crazy another way to figure uh, SWR darn I meant to bring something out here I gotta go get something and show you it's worth knowing okay I posted a uh, video sh uh, just a few days ago about a bit of this kind of stuff this is called a directional coupler this one goes from 1.9 to 4 gigahertz if you can this one right here is a uh, less expensive one but works good it goes from 700 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz and you don't need a spectrum analyzer you don't need a thousand watt transmitter I do all this stuff with a signal generator at 0 dBm or maybe I crank it up to 10 dBm very low power low power enough that you're not going to cause interference around the world you're not going to electrocute yourself or anything but anyway with this type of a couple it says incident that means that's the forward power you put the power in here from your signal generator and you put what you're trying to measure out here and then you screw this thing on right here to measure the forward power and then after you measure the forward power you write it down and then you take it off and you put it over here and you measure the reflected power and SWR again in measuring it like this it's so simple uh, the SWR I hope I can do this without messing it up is just the um, the voltage forward plus the voltage reflected so this is the voltage forward you read here this is the voltage reflected divided by the voltage forward minus the voltage reflected this is the easy way I'm sorry for that shadow but uh, not sure what to do about it. Guess it's coming right off of my, my light here. But as long as you can see the data, that's another way. That's the easy way. The easiest way is just a ratio of the impedance of your transmission line, your coax in our case here, and the load. It's just too easy. Okay, come on, focus there. Or if you're using something as simple as this, uh, these things are made by Hewlett Packard. They are um, known as crystal detectors. This one is good from uh, 0.01 gigahertz to 12.4 gigahertz. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, video the other day, I always use the same one because if you buy 10 of these things, unless you're lucky, all 10 of them are not going to give you exactly the same answer. So if one measures a little higher or lower than the other one, you see you're going to have some discrepancies there. But so you just measure it there, and then you move it over there, and you measure it, and then you do this right here because you're measuring voltage here. And remember what SWR is? It's VSWR. It's voltage, standing wave ratio, and that gives you SWR. Now when you use a watt meter, you got to do some complicated things to get SWR when you when you use a standard. Uh, bird watt meter or any other kind of watt meter unless it has uh, something that reads directly so these are two real easy ways to measure SWR of this type of equipment and you gotta measure it or otherwise you're just guessing and you don't know diddly okay this thing right here I hope I can do this without dropping it I'll show you the last thing that's on my mind right now ah, I hope I don't bust it okay there we go. That slides on there. Yeah. Uh, come on. It's on there well enough to stay. The only thing I don't like about this setup, and I do like about the about the uh, the little antennas that, that slide through is that's all you've got out there is is you've just got them sticking out here. You know, you just got this thing sticking out in the air being held up by its PVC stuff but in this case right here you have to take uh, the coax off right here and go over the top and I've been thinking about putting like a like an elbow right here 
and taking the coax and maybe running it back down, cutting a hole right there and running it back down so I can pull it out the back. I'm looking for, for thoughts on that. Many years ago when I worked for Lockheed, I did some uh, microwave work and it was, I think up in the 11 gigahertz range. And I'm gonna tell you something, you can't use elbows. I don't care who makes them. I mean, we had the, you know, what would you expect at White Sands Missile Range? You got the best of everything. But you can't use elbows. You you have to you actually have to to make a, a flexible little uh, piece of coax, maybe six inches long, and screw it on here, and then run it down here with a barrel connector. And and the instruments are so sensitive, you could measure the loss of every connector. You can measure the loss of the connector. It screws on here, the connector here, the barrel connector, then the next connector. And you use a little, lose a little bit each time. But if you put a, an elbow right here, you lose it all. You just lose it all. And it's, 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 it's mind boggling sometimes. Well, anyway, that is my passion right now, is a little bit of radio astronomy. As I think I mentioned, inspired by my wonderful friends here in El Paso. Uh, we're planning on going camping again here when it cools down a bit. And I want to take this. Another reason I wanted this, well, I wanted this for two other reasons. One, I want something to do, I guess. This one I can remove. I should get more gain with it. Because uh, this one, is, I didn't, this one's actually pretty fragile. See, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take much to bust that. And uh, let me show you what it looks like on the inside here. Wait. Can you see that? See how one of them comes up? And the driven element on the right is going through a little piece of uh, nylon right there. And that's a piece that you use to mount, uh, you know, big power transistors. I use copper and brass tubing. I don't use aluminum because I can't solder to it. But I think that's about it. i got to pick all this stuff up. It's about 3 a.m. But for the fun of it all, I hope this... Uh, is something you might enjoy as I put my ear up here I can actually hear myself yeah I get amplified so there you go ladies and gentlemen of YouTube land you all take care and uh, uh, share anything you know about this I, I've got a lot to learn just to show you that quickly I always forget something that it does work uh, I found I got these uh, last night I guess it was uh, when I had a little break in the in the rain there's a, a couple uh, this right here is one of the most interest uh, I found it by pointing the antenna at which I, I don't know why at this thought I could point the antenna anywhere and find this that's not true Need to point it uh, into the um, into the galactic plane, and there's different places to point it. Now, with this coming this winter, I'm actually going to find it interesting to point it at uh, M42, the Great Nebula in Orion. I wonder what'll be out there. That's one of my favorite uh, nebulas to to photograph. But anyway, once I found it and saw, hey, this thing actually does work. There's a lot of information on the internet, and some of it's really good, and some of it's baloney but this one right here is a 1420 670 see that 640 50 60 70 that's where I kept finding it and uh, the uh, it was in the constellation of Sagittarius and I'm I am I know almost nothing about the constellations. I've got a lot to learn. So uh, I just want to show you that uh, that one with the little dipole, it did work. And that's uh, what spurred me on to make the, uh, the feed horn so I can get a little bit better. The, um, I looked across the internet endlessly trying to find out what was the relative uh, strength of uh, this hydrogen line. And I never could find a clear answer until finally someone said it's actually buried in the noise. So you have to average it. 
I can't show you everything. I think I'm doing an average here of 128, and I'm getting these. Uh, you, you know, some of the software, this RTL SDR, I think that's what a lot of people use because it's really cheap. But I'm using SDR Uno or SDR Play. That's the piece of hardware, and the SDR Uno is the software, and it has sound and and what have you. But uh, yeah, you're you're not just going to point your antenna up somewhere and instantly it's going to be there. Like it doesn't. I didn't know it. And it seemed like nobody wanted to ever, nobody wanted to make it that clear. It seemed like sometimes people want to tell you uh, too much technical mumbo jumbo and just, this signal's in the noise. And like I say, you have to sit there and watch it. I mean, it takes like a minute. And then if you're looking in the right place and your scan is right with the right width and what, we can stretch this out or shrink it back down by zooming in and out but it takes a little patience and you've got to point it uh, in the right place uh, again in, in the in the, the Milky Way galactic plane and there's probably other places too that I don't know about <laughs>